here we go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part four of our tutorial series uh, for V-Ray. And here I'm going to hopefully finish up with this project. I am. I am going to finish up with this project. There's not going to be part five. So last time we finished off by rendering out a few, a few test images. And I do have him have them here, but I also have changed quite a few things. So you will, I'll kind of kind of guide you through them, uh, through the iterations that I've done, and also kind of explain it here in in the settings. Uh, what what kind of changes did I make? So the first thing was I immediately uh, when I rendered it out, I immediately switched to. Uh, backplate, uh, HDRI backplate. I will show you how to do that in, in a bit, but uh, ju just to give it a little bit more atmosphere, so they say, for, for the render, so it's not just a blank sky. And this was the output of our kind of first test, right? So this is what we got. Um, then, actually, let me go through the first iteration of all of the views. So the first iteration of the uh, second view was this. A little bit dark, but other than that, it was okay. Same backplate. And this view right here. A horror story, <laughs> right? So it, it, it does have um, a nice, how do I say this? Atmosphere to it. But perhaps it's not something that you want to use for a client, um, right? So you working on your projects might want to, to do something similar to this, you know, like a, a horror movie type of aesthetic. Uh, that's fine, um, absolutely fine. But in my case, I was looking for something a little bit more cheerful, a little bit more subdued, so to say. So then I did version 2 where I kind of wanted to balance out the cold, uh, the, the warm tones with the cold tones a little bit more. And this was the output of that. So I used a gray backdrop, so, so a cloudy day backdrop, and I reduced the color of, of the sun quite a bit to make it white, almost white, instead of orange. So this became a little bit better, I think. Uh, but still, there were quite a few issues. Well, first of all, the, there was this area right here. I, I don't, didn't like this at all. Like this uh, almost fence-like structure. So I decided to remove it for the next iteration altogether. Right, Get rid of it from the render. Why not? It's just a shed either way. And also made a few adjustments here and there in terms of what we see on the inside of the building and all of that good stuff. So, but this was like me moving in the good direction. Let me show you second iteration of the second view. This, this thing right here, you know, kind of uh, the branches here are a little bit too dark and here the bushes are too dark and uh, it's still it became a little bit too cold for, for, for my taste, a little bit too gloomy, right? So while we were moving in the correct direction, it was still not, not that great. And keep in mind, here I'm just changing the, the color settings mostly. Uh, not the color, the light settings mostly. Nothing more. Um, but the second iteration of this view became much more lively, much less horror movie. <laughs> Right, so so that was a um, this view benefited most from from my um, changes, and then I noticed like this area right here. Actually, let me whoop. this area right here that that we can see. I noticed that uh, like the trees they don't really kind of blend well with the with the ground. So I wanted to do something about that as well. You know, just just to fix it up a notch. Um, so in the third iteration, I kind of fixed it, but it's nice. You can see the, the road, God damn it! whoop, back here. You can see the road uh, going, through, uh, going through here, right? Like so. And everything was kind of becoming a little bit better. And then I made the third iteration, which is going to be kind of, 
I will be probably polishing it out a little bit more, but this is uh, where we are at so far. Um, and what, what I like, um, I probably need to, let's, let's do this. Bam. You don't need to see me for these. Um, so here I removed the shed to give a little bit of space for the, uh, for the house. And I think that the house is now looking nice. I added some texture for the backdrop uh, of the master bedroom, added some texture here for, for the onsen because there's going to be like a bath here. So it, it all became quite a, quite a nice composition, I think. Also changed the wood tiling here. Uh, just a little bit more kind of work with materials. The sunlight, I added a little bit of warmth to the sunlight um, or kind of rolled back the coldness of the sunlight a little bit more so it became a little bit better and also increased the brightness for these uh, trees so that they're kind of, uh, they frame the first plan a little bit better. Also reduced the intensity of the fog because the fog was a little bit too much. Uh, second view, looks like that, I, I kind of like it. Oh right, in, in the first view I also removed these guys, um, I don't know, straws, right? I removed them from the first view because they were way too intense, uh, way too much, right? So I ended up having this kind of a um, composition and I kind of like it. There's, you know, not much to, to talk about it here. Well, maybe we can talk about the stick that is just floating in the air, but ah, can't, can't win them all, right? Can't win them all. Um, I'm trying to rush through these tutorials, so I, I don't spend too much time kind of rotating the sticks and placing them correctly, but I will be doing that later. Also, these guys right here need to go down a little bit. Anyway, also the trees, right? So before... Let me show you this way. Bam. Uh, bam. So this is like version 2, this is version 3, right? So the trees became much more lively, right? Much more three-dimensional. Uh, and I'll show you how I achieved that in, uh, um, in, in a, just a few minutes. Um, version 3 of the Third view looks like this, even more brightness, even more and uh, saturated and more cheerful. I, I like it. I like it. I, I feel like this could be a bit of a more chill, cheerful style of render, even though um, the first version right here is quite a bit cinematic. I kind of enjoy the, you know, just the default render of this. Um, I will be coming back into these renders and giving them that, you know, that tsing, that nice, nice um, flavor. Let's call it flavor. I will be adding flavor to the renders, uh, but that is going to be probably done mostly in Photoshop. Um, so th these are not Photoshopped, by the way. Um, and then we have uh, one more uh, view, one more angle that I chose to do. Uh, this angle right here, uh, just to kind of see how how the building looks like in more of a perspective view rather than a. Um, let me turn back the camera. Uh, more of a perspective view rather than the uh, facade view that we are used to by now. Um, so this showed me a few issues that I that I have with with this uh, model. First of all, it's the terrace. Uh, edge right here. That's that's a very bad connection between the terrace and the and the ground. That's not believable at all. I will need to probably um, 3D model out something a, a little bit better for the terrace, and also the steel for the roof as well as for the columns. The steel here is too soft. It's too clean, right? So. I will be kind of revisiting that uh, later down the line and, and fixing it. But for what it is right now, I enjoy it. I, I think it looks good, good enough to kind of move forward with the 
with the process. So that's that's uh, the overview and, and what I have so far, right? So the scene looks kind of similar, only that we don't have any sheds here anymore. Those, those flowers are floating, but we, I will fix them later. And basically that, yeah, this is what we have. So let's let's begin. Let's begin the, the tutorial. <clears throat> what did I change to get to these settings? Well, if I go to the settings here, the main thing that I changed was um, I'm still using the, where is it? Let's go to lights. I'm still using the Rhino document sunlight, right? It's, it's still that. And the only thing that I changed in the Rhino document sun is I believe I changed the size multiplier uh, from it was five to ten, so it makes softer shadows, and I uh, changed the color of it to be a little bit towards blue. But keep in mind, I'm not overriding; I'm using a filter, meaning that it's still yellow. It just receives that kind of bluish filter on top of it, so it becomes a little bit colder because it's. Um, I, I felt like it. It was a little bit too too warm uh, for my taste. So that's the only thing that I changed here for the, for the sunlight. Um, the next thing was um, in the settings under environment, I changed the background. Instead of using a sky, I used the HDRI image, right? So remember how you attach textures uh, to to your models uh, or or to your materials. That was the same thing. I went to um, HDRI Haven. Just a second, just bear with me. HDRI Haven. I went to HDRIs, <clears throat> outdoor or skies. I believe I used skies. Let me, let me go back. Skies, and I just found. I believe it was this one, maybe, maybe something else. I don't remember anymore. <clears throat> but I just found one um, HDRI image that I liked, and I kind of used it um, as my background. It came in super dark because the sunlight is much brighter than the image, so I had to pump up the background intensity to 10. And then that solved it. Right? So it was just basically drag and drop in the HDR image, and then pump up the intensity to 10 to actually see the backdrop. Um, so then that got solved and we were Gucci. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, exposure value. So I brightened up the overall image to 11. I believe I used, let's see, I used 14 before. So I brightened it up from exposure value of 14 to 11. So that is quite a big jump. Um, yeah, uh, it, it worked out, I think. Other than that, nothing here in the settings. Everything else is, well, let me... Th this was from experiments, so let me just clear that. Yeah, like that. Um, this was just from, from me experimenting. Nothing more uh, was changed here. I also came in and uh, since I wanted to deal with um, the raw image without any filters, I disabled the exposure values, the white balance, the color balance on my render output dialog. Just to kind of, what I render is what I get, right? To, to actually see the scene without seeing all of the filters on top of the scene as well. That really helps out. So you will probably notice that this video is going to be a little bit more meta. Um, in terms of what kind of information I give you, it's going to be more of a thought process, but also we'll kind of jump into the interior and do some interior, interior work as well. Um, so that was done, but I still had a problem of the trees being too dark in the first plan. So I tackled that problem. Oh crap. That was my, probably my bad. I tackled that problem by taking a sunlight like this, or this is not a sunlight, sorry, this is a spherical light, by creating a spherical light with quite a bit of intensity, that's because it's outside, with 300 uh, intensity, uh, in places where my camera is, 
And well, let me just show you. Uh, let's switch this to exterior two, um, like that, and then type in camera show. There we go. So now in perspective, the camera is showing for my exterior two view, and I just placed the spherical light quite close to the camera so that it lights up this tree, right? And this is how I made it brighter, right? So basically lying is what I'm saying. I just lied about the sun, uh, about the light. Um, and uh, let's let's look at the. Let's look at the settings of the sphere light. So my settings were that it, it is invisible, right? So we can't see it uh, when it's being rendered out as this kind of glowing orb. And also it doesn't affect specular and also doesn't affect reflections. So these two tick marks I unticked because I kept getting a reflection of this in my windows. And when you disable specular as well as you disable reflections, it doesn't pop up anymore. It only changes the color of the stuff that is close, close to, right? And then it was just balancing. I noticed that I also used it for uh, camera three. Um, let me show you that camera. This camera right here. I also used it for this, but apparently I messed up and accidentally deleted it. So let me just... Whoop do this real fast. Yeah, this should be fine. I can just see. I can even bring it bring it in a bit more. So that 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 should be okay. Uh, so yeah, I just had like two spherical lights uh, working for me um, to light up portions of my scene. You usually do those those kind of adjustments at the end of your kind of rendering process. Uh, let me turn off the camera preview. Camera, hide. There we go. So now it's hidden. And let's jump into the remainder of, of the tutorials, right? So right now I'm pretty happy with the exterior. There's still more work to be done there, but um, the level at which I'm currently at is still, you know, pseudo realistic, not hyper realistic, but I. I am sure that with a little bit of polishing, we can bring it to hyper-realistic. So I'll jump in and create a single interior shot for you just to show you how to, how to do that, right? How, how do you make it happen? So first, let, let me check what kind of interior I want to sh show. This is kind of good. Master bedroom is kind of narrow, so no. Yeah, this is the most interesting area, right? I, I, at least I think so. So this, this area right here is the one that I'm going to be rendering out. I'll probably do like two, two camera views for, for this particular area. Um, so let's take a look and let's first of all frame those views, right? So to do this, I will be... How do we do this? Maybe I will just go to layers and turn off my trees and bushes here just so that they don't pop up like this so that they're not in the way and I can see that I messed up the layering because this is just still there. Uh, that's whatever. Oh yeah, I messed up quite a few layers. This is just so that it renders faster. And I will change the render set settings to interactive again. Exposure value, that's fine. We will change the exposure value later. Uh, render output, I will change the render output to something super small. Let's say 400, right? 400. And now I will start messing around with the camera. So here, I don't have a lot of freedom. I'm already outside of the building, right? If I kind of go in, I don't see a lot. And that's because by default, my camera is set to be 50, to use a 50 millimeter lens. So I will change it up. I will use like a 22 millimeter lens for it. Something like this, I think we'll, we'll, we'll do the trick. Hmm. It's 
a little bit much. Let's see from the other angle. Mm. Let's, so now I'm just trying to find a, a nice placement for, for the camera. I think, yeah, okay, sure. Something like this will, 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 will work just fine. I could kind of go down to the tabletop, but eh, don't want that, don't want that. Okay, something like this. And when you're dealing with a 22 millimeter lens, you're usually kind of, you will have this kind of fish eye effect, the, the, the bulging of um, vertical lines. So I'll fix that by coming in here where it says projection and changing from, from perspective to two point perspective, forcing all of the uh, vertical lines to be vertical, right? And not to kind of taper. So this helps a lot, quite a bit. And now I have some, some sort of view. I'm just kind of trying to frame it. I think that's, that's going to look fine. And let me just hit that render button to see what, what we're dealing with, what's, what's going on. Render it out. Just going to calculate a little bit. Okay. So this is what kind of render we get, right? And I'll immediately stop it because there's already so many things that I want to change about it. Um, first of all, whoa, so orange, right? Um, I don't want to have any artificial lighting in my inter interior shot. I want all of the light to come in from the outside. Well, first of all, let's look at the composition. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's look at the frame buffer. Uh, this window is really wide. Why is this window so wide? Not sure if I want it that wide. Maybe change the lens length to like 18. By the way, when you do a two-point perspective, the lens length changes uh, as well. So keep that in mind. So maybe 18. Let's render it again. Maybe this will help. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we are now outside of the building. <laughs> well, uh, we see the reflection, so we're kind of crammed against the, the, the glass uh, right now. So let's just move in just a tiny bit, tiny fraction. And uh, now we are indeed inside of, of, of the building. Uh, that, that's funny. That is funny. Okay. So we have that. Um, I think the composition was okay. Uh, there's something funky going on with the roof. I will fix that. Uh, but for now, the composition is fine. So first things first is I am going to um, save the camera, right? So named views, I already have them opened up here. So I'll just click that save button here. And I'll call it int1. Come on, int one. Okay, so that's my interior interior view. Um, second thing for interior view, I what I really like doing for for these uh, interior shots is creating a separate file, right? Which I'm just going to work on an interior in that separate file, and exterior stays the same, same way because. For an interior, I maybe don't want to have that, that much stuff all over the place, right? I maybe want to have a much smaller file. Uh, so I will kind of go to File, Save As. I'll just call it, uh, that's the date, and I'll just kind of add interior, int. 
and hit save. So just so that I don't force you to wait with me, I will stop the video and then we will continue on when, once it's saved. Okay, <clears throat> we are back. So it is saved, I have the file here and now we can start messing around with it. So as I mentioned before, I don't want any of the lights on the inside, so I'll be deleting them. Delete. Delete. I'm sorry if it's too loud. I guess it's it's not that loud, huh? Delete that. This one also is unnecessary. So I'm basically just going to town and just deleting all of the lights and just yeah, I'm left with the Rhino documents then, right? That's that's the only light that I, I am using for the interior. Um, let's take a look again at how it renders out. But before I do that, I do have one thing that I will change and I will not be explaining what I'm doing right now. Don't worry about it. It's just going to make it render out for, for particularly for me faster. Not for you, but, but for, for me. Um, in, in your case, it wouldn't help you. So that's why I'm not explaining. Okay, so this is what we have right now um, and it's dark right so of course it's dark we don't have any lighting but it is becoming a little bit better in in, in regard to the the conditions and so on uh, so next up what i'm planning to do is add, re-add the lighting. Well, first of all, let's change up the exposure values because I think that exposure can be heavier here. So my exposure values were 11. What if I do 8? It will become super bright there. That's fine. We will balance it out. But other than that, this is becoming to be like, this is starting to, to look a little bit more lively inside. Okay, so we have that going for us. Also, I kind of want to investigate um, investigate why is there such a big shadow here. So let me rotate around. Just trying my best. Where is that shadow coming? Oh, that shadow is coming from the, <laughs> the roof, huh? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So we will we will be fixing that as well, right? Uh, we will be fixing the sun position. So let me come back to interior one and let's find a nice sun position. So I'll type in sun. So now my sunlight is coming from there. So if I change it up to here, now it's coming from there. That's a bit better. What about here? Oh, that's that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. That's too much. So the the previous one was kind of nice, right? This is what kind of sunlight we get. And now let me just wait a bit for it to finish, you know, doing a basic render. Yeah, th that looks fine. I, I feel like that looks fine, right? So we have we have sunlight. But the thing is that, let me stop this. The thing is that with the sunlight here, I kind of also want to um, be able to balance out how much light there is in the inside. Because, for instance, these parts are still a little too dark, right? So what I'm going to do is I will switch to perspective view. Perspective. There we go. And I will create rectangular lights for all of these um, windows here. So, rectangular light. I'll just kind of create it. Uh, let's go for, let's, let's use the frame here. So, let me select it so that you can see where it is. So it's located right here, and I will drag it out a bit, and for sure I will be scaling it down, like this, right? So this is my 
first rectangular light and it's looking in the wrong direction so i'll just rotate it 180 degrees around so that it's looking in the correct direction um so this is the first one and i'm going to kind of copy it scale it down just make sure that it's kind of further away from the edges um not not too close to the edges um then i need one more on the other side like that okay so i have three of these here and i'll kind of bring them up here and scale them down so that they are a little bit more narrow and that this is like becoming a problematic area so i will kind of just work on the corner ones first scale them down down even further bring them in uh, they can be a bit bigger i think like that and this one can be a big boy so i'll just move it up scale it up like that so i have a bunch of lights now let's jump into interior one and let's uh, hit that render button to see what what kind of a effect we will we will get from them of course it's going to be a nuclear explosion now i think maybe not we'll see yep <laughs> super bright okay so a few things to change up first of all let me jump in here and go to lights. I have my all of my rectangular lights are belong to this guy because I kept copying, right? And I didn't make any of them unique. So I will make them first of all invisible. Like this. So that I can see through them. Second of all, I don't really want to see any reflections uh, from them. Right? So they shouldn't be reflected in any of the elements that I will have here. And also they are indeed super intense so i'll tone down the intensity to uh let's go for 30. 30 is still a little bit too intense maybe 25. Mm, maybe 20. yeah 20 <clears throat> seems to do the trick. Uh, I might revisit this and make it even less intense, but 20 seems good. So now I have full control over the directional light from the outside as well as the floodlight that goes in here. And I can see that my, my rectangular lights are kind of reflecting here, and I'm not sure if I want that. Maybe let's just see how, how bad it's going to get if I don't affect the specular reflections. It's not great. With specular, it was a bit better, right? Maybe it wasn't. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I will come back here and affect specular if, if, I, if I feel the need to. So this is what we have so far. Actually, now is a good time for me to kind of stop the render um, and go in here and fix the freaking roof because that's uh, some, something's off with it. And what is off with it? Oh, come on, zoom selected. What's off with it? Ah, it's not reaching. Um, it's not reaching the frames. It's, it's kind of going to the middle of the, of the form here. Let's see how I can fix it. Um, I'll probably just use solid points on, then turn on the wireframe view, grab these control points here, move to the other side. Grab those control points, change it back to shaded view and kind of just uh, Come on, just I'm I'm trying to zoom into them. I'm sorry, this is I, I know that it's disorienting. It's just super hard to kind of catch it now. Maybe I should do it later. Yeah, I'll do it later. For now, let let me just kind of lie a little bit about it and just do this thing uh, where I duplicate edge. This guy right here, extrude. 
uh, curve uh, direction let's say from uh, here to here so I just kind of extrude it oh and it's at an angle huh why is it at an angle super weird okay so I have a messed up roof we will fix that later <clears throat> this whole layer is messed up actually I'll, I need to keep it anyway sorry sorry for that uh, that's just my 3d modeling issue so now the logic is exactly the same as what we had with the site right when we did the exterior rendering we need stuff to populate this um, this area with or else it's not going to look good also the stairs um, needs a little bit of love so let me if your camera is funky just zoom select it zoom into some pieces of furniture and it's going to work a little bit better oops unless you kind of mess it up here So whenever you do zoom selected, it kind of reorients the camera and rotates around the selected object, right? So these stairs, um, I will chamfer edge. That, like that, like that. Oh, that's just a one millimeter chamfer. So let me do like uh, five millimeter chamfers. Uh, for particularly for these edges right here. I'm not sure if I need to do anything else. Maybe we can kind of add a little bit of chamfer here. Just in the top. Ah, it, it kind of goes through here, huh? Until here, here. And also just while we're at it, I'll just chamfer these edges as well. Yeah, that, that's, that seems good. Enter, enter. And now I have like five millimeter chamfers here. And also, I just want to see, that will probably not work. Yeah, let, let's keep it. Keep it the way it is. That's, that's fine. Like, the tiling is not that great and so on, I know, but <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine for what it is. Everything else I kind of keep. Uh, looks okay. So, we need to add detailing, right? Add, adding stuff. And my whole um, render is about the house and nature so i will add a little bit of nature inside but i will add like a contrasting nature so let's find um cgtrader.com just a second um like that um, come on please oh there we go okay good so plants right cgtrader.com plants free plants please because i don't want to pay and i will do tropical plants right so i'll use this guy right here um i'll probably use something like this this and this right more plants yay no, maybe this no uh whenever you see max that means it's j um, you can't see it up oh. whenever you see max uh, that means it's a 3D Mac, the 3ds Max file, and you will not be able to open it in um, Rhino. So you need OBJ, FBX, 3ds, uh, something like that to to be able to open it up. So this has an OBJ. So I'll, I'll this will la, 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 la. this will be the first one that I will download. There we go. We wait 20 seconds. This is fun. I really enjoy, by the way, adding plants to the interiors. It just gives a lot of, not character, but it becomes quite, um, quite more welcoming, I guess, <clears throat> is what I'm trying to say. Zip file, that's fine. We download it. Uh, while we're downloading it, I will get... Come on, I will get this one as well. This is a looks like a beautiful plant. Maybe the quality of it is not that great, but uh, the plant itself is wonderful, so <laughs> might as well, right? I really like plants. Um, I'll just copy that. Um, do I have anything? I'll just kind of use tree imports, I think, for this. 
uh, like the same folder for this just to save uh, save space and this is all messed up let me just clean it up while while this is in the counting and here i'll just don't download the obj file oh my god it's it's a big boy 255 megabytes i'm not sure if i want it now well we are downloading it so might as well right and one more one more one more or two more two more uh 3ds that's perfect looks good uh we'll need a bowl for it but that's fine i'll, I'll just find one laying around or maybe just create one uh free download yes please okay 20 more seconds this is downloading so i'm basically just fetching a bunch of files right and this is here now and i can delete all of this um this has been downloaded but wait, this one doesn't have... This is just a 3D object. Yo, where is your textures? I forgot to download its textures. So usually you get textures together with the object, uh, but here they were separated, so I'll need to come back to this one and download its textures. But for now, I can just kind of have it here. Um, and here we have bamboo um uh, like two files for some reason so i'll just download one of them i don't know uh so we have bamboo that's super nice and let's do one last one um uh, this this one right here so it looks beautiful uh free download yes please we wait again while we wait bamboo is downloaded um bow, bow, bow. Uh, let's just extract here. Ah. Oh, this is like Cinema 4D file. Okay, so C4D is also bad. It also doesn't work, right? So we need to re-download the bamboo files as well. Oh, apparently I'm struggling with this, huh? Um, FBX, Max, OBJ, Android. Well, you can see. These are different uh, 3D formats, and this is the maps that are used for these plans. So I will use uh, OBJ, and I will download the maps. And now we need to go back in here and download the bamboo again, but the other one, bamboo one, I, uh, I, I believe, while it's doing that. Uh, I'm not pausing the video just for you to see the, the process that I'm going through um, and kind of what, what, which one was it this was the like the flowers uh, table uh, the process that I'm going through just so that you can see you know uh, it does take a little bit of time to kind of get everything inside but it's not that long um extract here okay so i have all of the maps i can then delete that okay that's done um this is just oh yeah this is the the last one so this is like a plant one i'll just call it plant one we have banana flower table these two are done plant one needs a map and bamboo I uh, need to download the other one, the bamboo1.zip, and just pray that it will have uh, something that, a, a format that is usable. Um, hopefully it, it does. Uh, renders, no, 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 tree imports. There we go. That's bamboo. Uh, let's ex extract it here. Yeah, 3DS, perfect. Good, 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 good. Works. So we have a bunch of these. By the way, once you have downloaded it, downloaded it, you don't need to do that again as long as you save your files, right? So this is just a one-time hurdle. Redownload. Let's wait 20 seconds. While we wait, I will just check. Oh, I have a bunch of these opened up. I'll just check one of them. So banana plant. I have the textures, I have the 
obj file uh, so that's good we can use that flower table obj file textures that's good plant one so now we are going to download maps so this is going to be the, the maps for it um, for for our plant here so plant one is going to be done <clears throat> And the reason why I know that these are plants is because this is the zip file, while other ones are the Blender file and OBJ. So these are two 3D model files, while this one is a zip file, meaning that it's probably going to have textures there. Right? Copy that or cut that. Uh, plant one is that here. Extract here. Oh, that's an OBJ. As no, never mind. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's that's the 3D model. So it works. So I actually don't need this anymore because the zip file also had also had the model, which is great. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So this is done. So I now have four plants here which we can use. Yay. So let's start importing them. Let's start with the banana plant. So for banana plant, I will just get this, uh, yeah, probably like this 3D model here. Uh, import file, okay. I should probably, like to be pedagogical, I should probably import it to the correct, <laughs> correct layer, but uh, who cares. Uh, so we have the banana plant here, and I can't see it, right? So I'll type in ZS, hit enter, and now I'm zoomed into it, and now you can actually see where the hell it imported. And it imported into a very weird place. I'll just rotate it to the correct position. Go to the top view. Uh, I don't have a top view, so I will just make. Let's just go for. Let's see this. This is going to be our top view now. Mm, and I need to make it wireframe so that I can see where where the plant is gonna be going. Like that. So this guy right here will come in and will rest. Let me just place it somewhere on the table, right? Somewhere here, like that. And then in the left-hand side view, I will position it in, into the correct height, right? Kind of correct height. It doesn't need to be perfectly placed. Uh, now here, I can switch to interior one. You see? This is where it is, and it's super small. That's fine. We will scale it up. In perspective view, I will zoom selected ZS to it again. <laughs> no, it's such a cute one. Okay, so let's do 10 times bigger. Yeah, that's much better. Um, 10 times bigger plant. That's good. And now I'll just position it. It's going to be on the ground, right? I'm just going to move vertical. Me M enter v enter from this vertex oh uh it's it's a weird um if, if that happens then just ch change to c plane world top and then you will be able to move it correctly um m enter v enter from here from this point to this point okay so now it's resting on the ground and we have our banana plant let's see where we will be placing it so this is the view. This is how it looks like. Uh, I wanna kinda probably wanna place it somewhere there, right? Whoa, escape. No, 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 no. Control Z. I'll probably wanna place it somewhere there, right? Just so that it kinda anchors the, the, the view a bit better. Yeah, let's do it like that. That's that's going to be placed there, and it's crashing a bit, not crashing anymore. That's good, and I will just find a nice like resting position for it. I think that's good, and for now I will kind of keep it as it is and just take a look at how many objects I have here. And it's actually a single mesh, right? So it's it's a problem because it's a single mesh, and I know for a fact that it has multiple. Uh, materials attached to it so I will need to kind of figure out what kind of material goes where so I'll isolate it 
I'll create a new material for it. And usually when you import stuff that, ha that you know will have multiple materials, uh, then what you do is you create a material that's called multi-material for it, right? That means that there's a single mesh or a single object that has multiple materials. And you just apply it, apply to selection. And you just kind of create, I don't know how many, three. Um, I, I need to actually check here how many textures there are to see. So we have dry leaves texture, we have the ground texture, so that's already two. We have leaf, uh, just leaf texture, uh, that's three. We have stem textures, that's four, and we have stone and wood textures. I have no idea why these are here, but that's uh, uh, five and six, right? So I'll just create six textures here. One, two, three, four. So from zero until five, that's six textures. And I will be creating a generic material. And I'll call it banana one. And I'll make a duplicate of it six times. Four, five. Six. And I still don't know which texture belongs to, to where, so what I'm going to do is I will color these, these textures in, in different ways. So this one is going to be banana 1 is going to be red, banana 1-1 one one is going to be, let's say, blue, or, or cyan, uh, banana 1-2 is going to be green, 1-3 uh, is going to be pink. 1-4 uh, is going to be, let's go for uh, yellow. And dash 5 is going to be black. Right, so I have these textures here. And then I can go to, um, to my... How did I call the... Oh, I didn't rename the multi-material, goddammit. So, banana master. Banana master. And apply that material to my banana <laughs> and change, uh, start changing up the, the, the textures here. So for now, I will just kind of, oops, uh, I, I will just change it up like so. Red, blue, pink, yellow. Wait, did I mess it up? Oh yeah, I messed it up, sorry that, like that, like that, 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 and now we will check when I render it, we will check if it's gonna work or not. If it doesn't work, that's fine, I still have a few, a few tricks up my sleeve, and it doesn't seem to, uh, doesn't seem to work that well, so that's fine, that is okay, uh, we will, we will fix it. Actually, there's one thing that I might want to kind of investigate. And it's right now I'm just showing you how to troubleshoot, by the way, when things are not going correctly. So one thing that I want to investigate, I have, I believe I used this one. Right, this file right here. And that was OBJ. Or did I use this one? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> that was FBX. Let's try OBJ and just see if OBJ will, will work better. This FBX is a little bit a little bit more tricky. Import, okay. Yeah, yeah. Move it here. Somewhere close to my original banana. It's still black though. That's not a good sign. Messed it up. Yeah, it's still black. Okay, so it's not really working, but if I apply Banana Master to it, yeah, it's still black. Okay, delete that. So, uh, that doesn't work. If, um, if your multi-material doesn't work on the object, that means it doesn't, it hasn't retained that information, meaning that you need to kind of 
figure it out in any other way. And the way I usually figure things out is by separating the mesh into its parts. And I can do that by selecting the mesh and uh, using um, split disjoint mesh using split the joint mesh on it. And now I can see one mesh was split into 1,255 meshes, right? So that is something. But now I can select parts of it separately, right? And by doing so, I can uh, indeed create uh, a geometry, or, or not geometry, but I, I can apply different materials to these different parts. So I don't need Banana Master anymore. I can delete that and instead I'll just be using the, these, uh, these colors here. So banana one, let's start with that. That is going to be the leaves, right, of, of the banana tree. These guys right here. Apply the leaves and I will immediately jump in here and just kind of slap on the diffuse. You know, so that the leaves show up and also go to opacity settings because I can see, um, let me close that though, uh, because I can see the mask here. So the mask is opacity and drag, drag it in here like so. So now they look like that. Looks fine. Uh, I missed one leaf, but that's okay. And also I can see that I have a bump material here. So I'll add a bump to it as well. Uh, like that, right? So my bump is going to be like two millimeters maximum, not more than that. And reflection, so it is quite a reflective um, object, uh, a leaf of a banana, but it does have a little bit of uh, diff like this uh, glossiness, right, to it. So 0.8 and kind of me medium gray, and then missed this one so that one will will get selected as well now what i can do with these i can select all of them and i can group them and for for now i will just hide them so that they're not in the way and i as per usual forgot one of them <laughs> uh group hide okay next up we have the stems right so i can already re rename this to banana leaf then this one is going to be banana stem, right? And for banana stems, it's these guys, right? These guys right here. So I'll group them immediately. And I will go in here and see that I have like two stem materials. I don't really think I need to use both of them. I'll just use kind of one of them, whatever. Let's just take a look at how it looks like. Uh, apply to selection. Uh, eh. <laughs> looks bad. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, 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 fine, fine. We will do it your way. Ungroup. So stems are made out of two parts. That's fine. We will just kind of... Uh, kind of do it that way. So these parts will have the light stem material, right? This one right here. Or rather, not these parts. Uh, these parts will have that, that light stem material. Apply to selection, group, right? And hide. And then the remaining parts will have the other stem material. So that's going to be, let's say, this material right here. And I'll just call it banana stem 2. Uh -huh. So this is how you kind of rebuild it. Once you build it up, you can reuse the same uh, material. It's going to remember. So again, this is something that you do once. Uh, group. Hide. Okay, so what are these then? Uh, these are dry leaves of a banana tree. So I'm gonna select these. Uh, this is going to be my dry leaves texture. I will group it uh, or group them. And I can just call it banana dry. Bam, 
um, dry leaves diffuse. There we go. And I can al also see the opacity for them. Dry leaves opacity. Bam. That's it. And I, I don't really want to do anything else with them. I'll just hide them. Then there's a bunch of crap here. Uh, that I will, I will not group it. I will join it. I will join all of these into one mesh. And I, I still have this texture here. So I'll just call it banana crap. Banana crap. And what do we, what can we use here? Maybe the same leaves texture, but mm, maybe I just want to use wood for, for this, right? Wood. Apply. How does it look like? It looks fine. Um, maybe, no, no reflection, just wood texture. That, that's going to be fine. Hide that. Then this is ground, apparently. Like, of course it's ground. So that's going to be banana one, or, or rather banana ground. And that is going to be applied to selection. And also it's going to have a diffuse and a bump map, right? So diffuse goes to diffuse, bump goes to bump. And this is quite a bumpy thing. So I'll just give it like one centimeter of bump for it. Last thing is the pot, but for the pot, I'm actually going to kind of reuse stuff that I already have. For instance, this porcelain. Whoa, why does it look so funky? Uh, we'll see how it renders out. If it renders out weird, then we will use something else. But if it renders out fine, then it's fine. Um, so we have our banana tree. Um, I will show. So this is all of it, right? And I will select all of these parts. And I will group them together. Just so that when, whenever I move the banana tree around, it, it kind of... Um, I, I don't need to select all, all of these. And I'll make a copy of it. Since we spent so much time kind of doing it, it makes sense to kind of place it somewhere. Um, somewhere else. Not somewhere, somewhere else, but uh, to, to actually uh, have, it, uh, have it in two spots. Uh, so my thoughts are maybe... Maybe something like so. Can it be here? I mean, it's it's a weird place to put a banana tree in, but why the heck not? Let's say the person here really likes bananas. <laughs> okay, so we have that, and I will just put it down to the... Oh, no, 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 don't do that. I'll put it down to the correct height. So even even lower. Oh, maybe I can do it here and kind of look at it in, in, in perspective view. Just place it like so. It's a little bit in the ground, but we won't we won't see, so that's fine. And I will be rotating it. Well, just so that they are not kind of the same. Okay, so we have our bananas. Um, let's add more stuff. By the way, have you, did you know that on YouTube, on the top uh, bottom uh, right corner, you have a possibility to change the speed at which the video is being played? I'm just saying, right? I'm, I'm, I'm just, for no, not no, any particular reason, I'm just kind of remembered it. Just letting you know. Um, so banana is done. Let's look at the, let's put some flowers on the table, right? Uh, so the, these flowers will come in here, will get imported. Just hit OK for that. Wait for it to load in. Um, it is loaded in, so I can zoom select it to it. Why does everything import here? I, I don't know. Uh, it's super weird. Let's just bring it back, bring it back. I got like that. 
no idea why I'm not using the top view. Don't 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 worry about it. And get back. Uh, how does this look like right now? Zoom selected. Oh, rotate. Bam. Okay. We're Gucci. Uh, we drop it down. Zoom selected again. And basically, I just want to drop it all the way down and place it on the table. And yeah, scale it up like 10 times. It's super small. Uh, positioning like that. And you go down. Uh, not too much, not too much like that. I think we're good. Are we good? Feels like we're good. And here everything is separated. Thank God. Right. So we will not need to do too much uh, of, of separation and then joining. It's just applying materials, which is great. Um, so this is going to be, let me create a new material again. <clears throat> uh, flowers. One or yeah, let's just let's just call it them that flowers one duplicate. I have no idea how many of these I will need. Flowers two, look at that three, four. Now let's just go with five, and this one is going to be flowers glass. Um, I'm, I'm sure that I will want the glass for these. So full reflection, uh, full refraction, and the color a little bit towards blue, but with a very, very low fog multiplier. And this will go in here into flowers glass. That's how they look like. <clears throat> and there is going to be... Okay, so there is some stuff inside. I need to check how, how how it looks like in the in the like in its original version. And wh where is it? There it is. Oh, so it's just water there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So I can just kind of select that mesh and just call it. Um, I'll just use this flowers water like that uh, make it also black full reflection full glossiness but index of refraction is 1.33 so it's a different index of refraction or reflection also 1.33 here um, color white and it's clean water, so I don't need to change anything else here. Okay, so those two are done. And now it's time for the flowers themselves. Let's take a look at what kind of maps we have. Ah, uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's, ooh, there's a lot of them. Okay. Um, let me, yeah, sure. Let, let, let's do it live. Let's do it live. So, flowers one, huh? Yeah, I will not even be changing the names of these. I will just kind of um, go to town in terms of, of, of adding the, the textures um, without ooh, by, by saving some time in, in name changing. So where do we begin? Um, it's a little bit messy. It's quite a bit messy. Let's do that. Uh, this first, um, go to opacity, you slap on the mask, and then we have normal and reflection, so bump map, actually let me do this, this is gonna be faster if, if we kinda do it this way. Uh, so bump map, uh, it's not a bump map, it's a normal map. That and reflection goes in here, like that. And glossiness 0.8, something like this. 
Okay, so we have this, and now we need to figure out which, uh, which part does it belong to. Um, which is going to be quite a tricky, tricky thing. So those leaves, um, let me just try it on here. Apply. How do they look like? They look exactly like I want them to. Kinda. Mostly. Okay, good. Good enough. Good enough. We'll, we'll, we'll say it's good enough. I know some stuff uh, seems to be floating around. We ignore it. And if you ignore it hard enough, it will indeed go away. So next one is Monstera Leaf. Uh, normal map. And bam. That's the normal map. What else do we have here? Nothing. Okay. Cool. So, well, at least we know for a fact that they go in here. Right? So that's done. Next. Um, just these leaves, maybe? Uh, do we even have anything? Yeah, we do. We do. But maybe we need to use these. I think, like, these are these, right? Like they look like they belong to that family, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. Um, let's just see if it's going to work or not. I'll just apply the texture, and let's just see. No, they are not that. So we will be using this instead, or maybe this. Let's let's see how it looks like with with these leaves. It's pretty close, ain't gonna lie. It's pre pretty close, but it looks inside out, right? So let's do these instead then. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the stuff. That's that's the stuff that we want. Okay, so it's these guys here, and we will just use the mask for opacity. Bam. We will use the bump. Well, it's not the bump, it's gonna be the normal map, like that, and we also have reflection. So I'll use reflection for glossiness of 0.8. We're getting there, we're getting there. So these guys right here, I assume these are like brown or grass, or maybe this texture. Let's look at this texture first. Um, so that I will just apply selection. I could check the. It looks fine, but I, I don't think it's that. Uh, let's let's take a look at. They are brown. Okay, they are brown. Confirmed. They are brown. So the only brown thing that we have is the bark. So I'm going to apply it here. Actually, nothing more because they are so small that I don't really need to do anything else with them. And then we have these stems here. Oh, and I'm I'm I need one more material, please. Uh, flowers, uh, stems. Apply. And now let's find the stems. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky. And it's so close, it's so close. Uh, maybe it's just grass, right? Maybe it's just grass. Is it just grass? That looks fine, it's good enough. <laughs> uh, good enough, good enough. I'm happy with that. We call it, we call it a day, we call it a day. I don't want to spend so much time here. Oh, there's still more stuff here. Oh no. No, no, no. So that is like white spots here. That's not that great. Um, that means that we do have composite materials here, uh, which I'm not happy about, but it is what it is. And we have something here that still doesn't have a material, and I assume 
this guy right here is indeed going to be the these leaves right right here so let me quickly create create them um i'll just kind of duplicate this leaves three uh like that apply oh expand drag and drop uh, no bump map but there is a reflection map there is a reflection map like so uh, 0.8 of course of course 0.8 okay uh not the best especially the stems maybe we can fix the stems though so let me isolate this part isolate this part and split this joint mesh yes we can okay that's that's good to know so i now i am able to select the stems and i will just slap on the the, the grass material to them and i believe it was here apply yeah that's good enough looks looks fine um and then uh, group it not join it but group it show show let's take a look looks fine looks okay um i, I think it will render out nicely so we have uh one more uh object done two to go drag and drop in import okay um yeah 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 there's only going to be like three materials here that that is good and it's not responding for some reason Oh, that's because this is the 200 megabyte file, so it's going to take a while to import. Shall we pause the video and I will do other two off camera just to save time? I think we should. Let's do this. I will, I will do the other two off, off camera and then we will continue. Okay, we're done. Um, so these are the plans that I have and we will continue. It crashed one time so now it's now it's night time because i had to redo all of it anyway um let's let's take a look at the render let's take a look at what we get or it can crash again okay it doesn't that's perfect bum, 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 bum. Okay, so the, the stuff that we see here is from this particular view. Well, now, now it's going to kind of re redo it. It's from this particular view and everything is kind of okay. Like, I'm, I'm just looking at the overall composition. We have a green spot here, it connects to green spots there, it connects to the outside. So we have like visual, um, visual connectivity here from close by to far range uh, plants. And we have a few of the kind of nice little spots here, the uh, leather, uh, how is it called, uh, God damn it! What what's the name? I know everyone's just screaming at, the, uh, at, at their screens right now, yelling me the English name for them, pillows. Uh, yes, uh, so the leather pillows are there as a, as a nice shiny accent to break apart the, you know, kind of boring gray uh, sofa. Uh, there's kind of some stuff going on here, not too much, and it's a little bit boring, but I think with higher resolution, uh, those kind of scenes will start popping up and we will see more. So this is okay, like th this is good enough render. I, I believe uh, for us to continue uh, continue on with our journey in V-Ray. So I'll stop the render. One, one thing that I want to change is the intensity of the color of the palm tree. Uh, so this palm tree right here. Uh, let's see. Um, I believe I have saved it as P3. 
um yeah so that's p3 number four that's its color so i will just wrap it in color correction and i'll just change its color to be a little bit less uh, bright Come on just tiny bit less brightness like that something like that okay <clears throat> that should help with you know the intensity that we're getting from the palm tree other than that everything is kind of set up and we're good to go with this particular view i will show it in the probably like in the post uh, at the end of the video i'll just add this render we will not be waiting for this to render out usually interior views render out uh, take longer to render out than exterior ones so interior one is done and i will just show you um, one more so let's let's create an interior two uh, like the second second view for interior because i really want to have something like this As my interior shot i feel like this this would be pretty damn cool to have but i still need to have like a how to explain this right now the framing is bad right i need to have a better frame for this so first of all the proportion of it needs to be better so i'll change the proportion uh from um 1.85 to 1 to something closer to a portrait so that's four to five that's like a portrait pro proportion or maybe even well let's let's keep it as portrait i'll just hit render just to see what what kind of out output we're gonna get just so that we get a little bit more of the roof so to say I'll just wait a bit. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. There we go. So that's that's the view that we currently are, are dealing with. And it's not, not a good um, composition, for sure. Well, first things first, I want even higher proportion. So I will change this to... Right now, uh, let's go for custom, and I will change this to 0 0.666 to 1, some sort of this, this kind of proportion, and now we, we do get the roof, but I, I do need to rotate a bit, get it going, to, to find, you know, the, the nice, ah, that's the stair, stop, <laughs> to find the nice angle. Where, where it's going to kind of show both the, the floor and the roof. And this does seem like it's an angle that we can use. But one thing that I need to change is uh, the lens length. It needs to be even wider here. So I'll change it to 15 millimeters. I will not. <laughs> I will not be changing. Or maybe, maybe I will. Let's see. Let's see if we can we can work with this so we get something like that that is not that bad and kind of work with this um let's try even less uh, 14 there we go 13 I think 13 will do the trick just just fine. So this is going to be our um, final interior view. I'm going to stop the render for a bit. And I'll, I see that I need more trees there as well. So I'll just add more trees in the background. Uh, but basically, I just save that view. Interior 2. And I need to remember so I, I will write this down, the proportion that I'm using. 
um, it's going to be 0 0.666 to 1. And the other one was 1 1.85 to 1, right? So all of my horizontal ones are 1 1.85 to 1 proportion. The vertical one, the only vertical render that I'm doing is 0 0.666 to 1. Okay, so we have this going on. Great. Um, let us... What did I say I'm going to do? I said I'm going to add more trees, so let, let's do that. Uh, oh yeah, and this stuff that you see here, like this clipping thing, the, the, the view clipper, um, it's, it's basically this save frame option here. If I turn it off, it's not, not there anymore. Um, just a little note there. Okay, so we're looking at the trees from here, huh? There's a bunch of them. I wonder why does it did not show. Mm, maybe not like that. Maybe just straight up copy place. Should do the trick. I'm not rendering anything on this side, so might as well just place all of the trees here on, on, on this edge and kind of move them move them around a bit. That. Um, and also the, grab a few. I'm trying to grab the the high high quality ones. Let's see these guys and just move them somewhere somewhere here. Yeah, that that should be that should be absolutely fine. So we have the trees done. Uh, the contrast was kind of okay. The only thing uh, for this view is I, I do want to see something uh, from the greenery. Um, so let's see, light generator window now. View reframe buffer. So I kind of want to place something here, maybe. Some sort of a accent, right? Um, so. I could place something on the table, but I'm thinking of placing something on the floor rather than the table. Let me just find the palm tree, <laughs> of course, or is the palm tree, and just place it somewhere here. Right? Render it out. Also, see how this is all distorted? That's because we're using two-point perspective. You, you can't look at, at it from a weird angle with two-point perspective. Um, so that's why all this view is so distorted. But I can just switch it to perspective and now it's back to normal. Come on. Work. There we go. So a little bit of, a, of an accent with the with the palm tree here. I think that just kind of gives it a little bit of, of, of realism. Is this floating? This is floating. Yo, palm tree, we need to talk. Why are you floating? So this is going to be used for I'm just going to create two layers. One is going to be palm interior two. And this guy is going to be in this layer. And then previously I had another one in the corner right there. And this one is going to be um, create a new one, palm int one and place it into this layer, right? So now I have two, two of these palm trees. I think that's going to... Um, and I can switch between them, right? For now, we're just rendering out this one. Um, right. Let's call it. Let's call it. I, I think these, these two renders are okay for interior as well. Uh, could be better. Always could be better. I will be showing them at the end of the video together with the remainder of the renders. Um, but now let's let's take a look at some one-off things that that uh, I missed during these tutorials.
right? So, so some just some additional stuff, additional information. Uh, so let me, yeah, I'll just save save the file. So I'll save the file, and then uh, we will continue. All right, so this is saved, and now I will just uh, create a new uh, file. Uh, I just literally just saved it. I'll create a new file, and I'll show you the remainder of things that I probably missed here in this file. So just to have, have some sort of a geometry uh, to go off of from, uh, I will create like a box. Actually, let's do... Um, 1000 by 1000 by 1000 so a cube of uh, meter by a meter by a meter and then i will do a sphere that's also one one cubic meter well it's not one cubic meter but it's a radius of half a meter so diameter of one meter i have those and then i will create one more plane this time, uh, just like plane, plane, which is just going to be a surface for, for these two, two guys, right? If I now render them out, one, if I render them out, this is how they look like, right? So, right, um, first of all, let's grab a few materials and slap, slap uh, the materials on them, or rather, let's just create a generic, a single generic material and just apply it to the cube, the, uh, the cube, the sphere, as well as the rectangle, right? Uh, render it again. Again, no, no, nothing, nothing too fancy. But now, let's start messing, messing around with this. So what I'm going to do is I will create, I, I will get rid of the, first of all, of the environment, of the background, so that it's just black color, so we have no lights in the scene again, and I will create, um, let's say, a sphere light, somewhere here, come on, sphere light, like that, a rectangular light, uh, let's just say sphere light, rectangular light, and some sort of maybe two rectangular lights right so one goes on here it's a pretty large one let me make it smaller like that rotates down and the other one is going to be kind of a copy of it but i will select it go to properties make unique uh, to make it kind of independent rotate it uh, maybe something like so and just shine light from it here Okay, so we have uh, we have this kind of situation going on. Uh, three light sources. I'll hit render. That's how it looks like right now. You know, uh, it works. Uh, I will adjust a few settings here and there. So first of all, I will uh, make these kind of different colors. So one of the rectangular lights uh, is going to be white. The other one is going to be blue. Bluish. Slightly blue. Well, it, it could be more like that. And the sphere light is going to be some sort of a very warm orange color. Something like that. And its intensity is also going to be 100. Right? So we get this kind of a situation going on. With the camera, I'm going to change the exposure value to like 12. Uh, to just get a more even kind of coloring. Or, or no, no overexposure in my scene. So I have this situation, looks great, right? Uh, well, for what it is, I guess, uh, looks fine. Um, and th there is one thing that I want to show you with this particular scene. So, and, and it can be used for anything else. So back before, and actually let's render it out, not with interactive, but with progressive. There we go. So it's rendering it out. Let's just give it a little bit of time to do its magic. Okay, that's that's good enough. Um, this image right here, I, I showed you last time that in, in V-Ray 5, so this is the newest version of V-Ray. In V-Ray 5, you have the source 
operation here, which is source RGB, but you also have the possibility to use either composite or light mix. And I'm not going to talk about composite, but I'm going to be talking about light mix here. So the really nice thing about light mix is that, um, well, if I turn it on now, it's going to say, please add light mix. RE stands for render element and re-render. Okay, how do we do that? Well, it's the, these render elements that I've skipped during the main tutorial session. Uh, and if I click on it, I can find, or rather, I can create a new, um, a new render element, right? And I need to find the one that's called light mix. There it is, light mix. So I create that render element and I don't really need to change anything about it, right? It doesn't really ask me. To, to, to give it any more settings. So I'll just hit re-render or hit the render button again, right? And now I have the possibility to use RGB or light mix. And notice what happens now when I'm using light mix. I have all of my lights as separate entities here, which means that I can just hide them right and i can just look at yo how does the sphere light light up my scene right or how does the rectangle light light up my scene the first one or maybe just the sphere light and just the second rectangle light how do those light up my scene and if i want to i can say but wait 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 this is a little bit too intense right maybe i just maybe i'm just going to change this to 0 0.5 you know, half of the intensity. And maybe the sphere could be actually two, could be a little bit more intense. Now you're kind of starting to get the understanding of the strength of this approach, right? You have full control over your lights after you finished the render. This is something that is really, really good. Super good. So, Keep in mind that, right? V-Ray 5 has this fu functionality and it's a really great functionality uh, to know of. Then uh, I kind of talked about, so this is one, one part, another part. I kind of touched upon the displacement map and the difference between displacement map and bump maps, but never showed you how to actually add a displacement map to your objects, uh, simply because it was too heavy. Um, I believe that displacement maps are good when used correctly uh, so i'm not i haven't been showing how to use them in uh, the main project let's see it like that so for displacement maps let's see I'll, I'll use it on this cube so i'll just create a new material generic um, cube and one more material generic sphere Right? So this is going to be, oh, come on, uh, apply, this is going to be the cube and this is going to be the sphere, right? And let's say our, both of them are going to be pretty dark. So I'm just going to tur turn it down to a darker color. So both of them are pretty dark and both of them, let's say, are a little bit glossy. So reflection, I will just add a little bit of reflection, 0.8, just to make it a bit glossy. Reflection, 0.8, a little bit of it, a little bit glossy. And just to make it nicer, I will chamfer, or no, let's not chamfer the edges here. So let me render, render real quick. This is how it looks like right now. You know, kind of glossy to things, right? <clears throat> so now this uh, bump map versus displacement map. Um, let me... Um, well, mm -hmm. Let me add a bump map to the cube. Not a displacement map, but a bump map. If I expand this, I can add a bitmap. I can add a texture or I can just drag and drop it on top of it. And let me just find some sort of a texture that will work. Uh, so I'll just go to here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Textures. 
Uh, sure, rusty metal. That's fine. I'll just I'll just use this. Whatever. It's kind of random, random texture here, right? Uh, so this is now my bump map texture. And if I take a look at the preview, it looks like this. And if I um, kind of well, I do need to use texture mapping on this this cube, but I'll just do just a bounding box and not even care about the the size of it. If we take a look at this now, uh, that texture is not well. It, it is showing, but it's super subtle, right? That's because our bump map is set to amount of one. So let me change this to like uh, 100, right? Now we can really see it, right? The, the, the roughness of the surface and, and so on. So this is like uh, as if the amount was 10 centimeters, that's way too much. Let's just do 10, right? So a little bit of, of roughness on the surface of the cube. So that is one centimeter roughness on a one cubic meter of a cube. Um, so that's the bump map, right? But what would happen if instead of a bump map, so let me disable that, we use the displacement map. First of all, how do you add a displacement map? Those of you who are using older versions of V-Ray will already see an option for displacement here. Uh, so you just expand that. Those of you who are using newer versions of V-Ray will need to add attribute right here and choose displacement from that add attribute drop-down list, right? So displacement uh, attribute becomes apparent here, you enable it, and then all you need to do is just kind of add a bitmap, you know, add the same texture, and find it, open. So we add a texture to displacement. You always use normal displacement, by the way. And it's lagging, there we go. So now it's alive. You go back, and then you look at different settings that you can change. So amount, first of all, this is the same thing as with the bump, amount in millimeters, so I'll just change this to 10. And it actually displaces the geometry in this case, rather than displacing, or rather than just shading it differently, meaning that where you have the seams, it's going to create these gaps, right? So that is a, the first problem, is seams become problematic, meaning that displacement is great for rounded stuff and stuff that is, you know, like a ground condition, but pretty bad for cubes and stuff like that. So I will, um, to solve that, I will check keep continuity. Once I've checked that, it's going to kind of try and stitch the seams together. And it does a pretty good job at it. Right? So that is solved. And then uh, amount and shifting. So if my amount is set to 100, right, the cube is going to look like this when it's rendered out. And notice how, lo how much longer it takes. So this is just a cube. Right? If you do this on the landscape, it takes so much longer. So that means uh, when, when the amount is 100, that means that I have a one uh, 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 cube, and all of its vertices, all of its points are being pushed away by 100 millimeters, right? Uh, to balance that out, I can shift the pushing by uh, minus 50. So basically, I shift it back and then push away, right? To kind of keep the correct size of, of the form. So you can think of shift happening before, the pushback uh, from the displacement happens, and it's basically to solve the enlargement problem of the object that's being displaced. So that's displacement in a nutshell. Nothing more to say about it. It's it's one of the heaviest things that you can do <laughs> with your with with your scene, adding displacement. Uh, right. I'll disable that. So that is done uh, with displacement, and now. Um, light generation, I showed you that. I can show you one thing, uh, that is in V-Ray 5. It's still, the functionality is still complete garbage, but uh, it will become good eventually. Uh, it's this, uh, and it's only in uh, V-Ray 5. Uh, it's this V-Ray vision icon here, as a circle with two arrows around it. Uh, which basically opens up this kind of real-time rendering engine. Uh, so it's a little bit different from your 
uh, your, uh, from the Vray interactive view in the sense that it automatically shows you the final result, like so. Uh, but the quality of the final result result is worse, right? Uh, so it's it's buggy. It doesn't really work that well, and there are a lot of issues with it. Uh, so I I just kind of ignore it and and don't don't really show it to uh, to students. But it is there. The very vision thing, the uh, real time rendering is there, uh, and it's hopefully going to become better and better over time. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you before we kind of call it a day uh, is wait. Sorry, I'm just looking if. With two things, two things that I want to show you before we will call it today. One is Viri grass, right? Or Viri fur, I guess, uh, in this case. But uh, we as architects, we immediately see fur and we think, I can make grass with this, <laughs> right? So if you want to make grass, it's also, it's in the same line as displacement. It's super heavy to do, right? But if you really want to do it, you can, right? So we can add fur or grass to some sort of selected geometry. So in this case, it's going to be my surface, of course. So I'll add, I will select the surface and I'll click on this add fur to selection. Then I'll go to my, my V-Ray asset editor. I'll go to options and here I'll see fur. If you have accidentally added multiple, like fur multiple times to the selection, just please delete all of the fur. <laughs> objects here and redo it because it's going to crash your computer uh, either way. And don't press render when you're doing this because here there are still many things to change uh, for it not to crash. So first things first, it's how many strands of grass will you have, right? And you control it here. How many strands? Well. You have two ways of how to calculate it. One is per face, one is per area, right? Per face is basically if you're using polygons, uh, like a mesh geometry, then you can kind of calculate how much strands you will have per each face. But that is, uh, in our case, not important because we're using a surface. So instead, we can calculate per area, right? So per area means how many strands of grass will you have in when, in one, in my case, cubic uh, not cubic, square millimeter, right? Because I'm dealing with millimeters here. Uh, so if it's 0 0.6, that would mean, let me just whip out a calculator. Ah. Calculator, let me measure area of this guy. So we have one, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. 147 million million square millimeters here, right? And if we have 0 0.6 strands per square millimeter, we're left with 88 million strands. This is going to just destroy the computer if I press play, right? So what I want to do is I want to make this much, much smaller. Let's uh, start with 0.006. It's not going to be big, but it's going to give us an idea uh, of, of what we're dealing with, right? So I'm starting with that. Then here we have like length, taper, gravity, and so on, and global scale. So I will change the length. Basically, how, how high do I want the grass strands to be? Well, usually I kind of do like 10 centimeters, but here I'm just going to do like 50 centimeters. Thickness of the strand uh, is going to be around 15, maybe, uh, millimeters. So 15 millimeters height, 15 millimeters width, maybe this can be 75. Uh, this is, these numbers are something that you need to work with and, and figure out. Paper, this is how um, pointy the grass strands are. 0 0.9 means that the bottom thickness is... 10 times larger than the top thickness. So it tapers down to only 10% uh, of the, its original size. Gravity, this is how much they bend downwards. And bending, this is how much they curl, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I'm not sure about the bend and gravity and how they work together. 
um, just change the gravity if you want to change the, the bend of them. And then we have global scale and knots. So knots are basically how many breaks uh, do they make before they kind of finish up. Uh, don't worry about it. It's the resolution of them. I'll just hit render now just to see what, what kind of output do we get. Let me zoom in. And I can see here that there are indeed strands all over the place, right? But they are a little bit too small and a little bit too dense for me to see the differences between them, right? So I'm going to uh, say the length of them should be uh, 150. Let's do like 15 centimeter high grass blades and count per area. Let's do less, uh, 0 0.003. Render it again, so they become even higher. This starts looking like a carpet rather than a <laughs> rather than grass. So I need to change this even further. Zero point zero zero one, even less. Now we're starting to get like individual strands from this. That's good. Maybe the width of them can be, the thickness of them can be less. So thickness only 10. There we go. We finally can see some ground underneath. Okay. So now I have like grass that is working, that, that works. So I will uh, now create a material for it. And there are many ways of how you can create like nice materials for the grass strands. But the one that I like to do, so I'm enabling it, and I'm skipping over variance curl and level of detail because uh, no, too many things to, to learn. So just this and material. So for str uh, grass strands, I will just create a new material, generic, call it grass. Grass. And for the color, I will not just give it like a green color, but rather I will give it a map, right? So I'll expand the textures and I will find a texture that is called fall off. There we go. This fall off texture. The way fall off works is basically when you look at a sphere. So this example here is a sphere. When you look at a sphere, uh, the fall off map will show you one color when you look at the uh, faces of the sphere that are perpendicular to your view, like 90 degrees to your view, uh, in one color, and it will show the uh, faces that are parallel to your view in another color, right? So you get this kind of a nice effect, meaning that for the black color, I can choose to have something like, uh, let's say, warm, dark, dark green. Trying to find a nice, nice color here, dark green. And for the sides of it, when you look at it from an angle, it's going to be much closer to, to yellow, something like this, right? This kind of a green. So I end up having this kind of material created. And then I can just add a little bit of reflection with a little bit of, well, 0.7 maybe. A little bit of glossiness uh, just just to give it some some bizarres and then we go back to the objects we choose fur which is actually grass for material we choose the grass material we hit that sweet render button and then we see that we have indeed created a bunch of grass trends right So that is one thing that uh, I didn't want to show you during the tutorial because I wanted to do moss instead of grass. But uh, if you want to create grass, this is how you create it. I strongly suggest creating grass in just places where you will be seeing it and not in places where you're not because it is a very CPU intensive task to do so. But it looks great, right? I think it looks fine. Um, of course, uh, for like more advanced materials, you would have variation in color for grass strands, and you would have 
a little bit more variation, but for what it is here, this is passable as grass. Okay, so we have that done. What else? What else? What else? What else can I show you? Let me just go through this. Um, so materials, we I kind of touched upon most of these. Lights, we looked at lights, geometry, looked at geometry, render elements, textures, whatever, settings, denoiser, contours, volumetric environment. Ah, yes, okay. Um, one last thing. Camera, depth of field. Under settings, camera, depth of field. Uh, sometimes you want some things in the foreground to be blurred. Usually in architecture you don't, uh, because that immediately dictates the scale. Uh, but in, sometimes you, you kind of... Uh, especially when you're doing like... Um, how is it called? Product design renders. Uh, then you want to kind of blur out everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'll kind of frame this in, in, in a nice way, like so. And I will turn on depth of field here. I'll choose to pick point to where to focus on with the camera. Pick point. Let's say I will be focusing on this point right here. Point right, right there. And that's it. That's all I need to do. Depth of field on, uh, focus source, fixed distance to this point. As long as I don't move the camera, it's going to be fine. If I move the camera, everything's going to be screwed up. And then you will need to disable depth of field. So now it, it doesn't look like it's, it's working, but it actually is working. It's just that these are like one mirror sized things. So of course the camera will not be blurring out uh, stuff around because it's not how cameras would work. These would need to be pretty small things for camera to blur out uh, close range blade grasses. But we can kind of lie about it and we can uh, choose to defocus and increase the defocus amount more. And now we can start seeing that stuff that is nearby is being blurred out, right? And we are only focusing on this area right here. So that's how it works. Pretty nice, but for architecture, please don't use it. It will look really cheap and bad. Um, just just use it for like product design and, and so on. Like for, for this kind of a kind of stuff. Imagine that this is like uh, some sort of a, a football shoe instead of these two things. You know, a football shoe on a football pitch with big lights and this defocused foreground and background. And then it kind of makes sense. But for architecture, no. Okay, so that is that. We are done. Happy to announce that we are done with these tutorials. There, is, there are many things that I haven't shown you um, how to do. Oh, by the way, uh, if you, once you're done rendering to save it, you just click on the save button. I, I don't think that you need a tutorial for that, you know, to figure that out. You just save it. If you save it as a PNG, it's not going to save the background. The background is going to be transparent. If you save it as JPEG, the background is going to be there. You, you are going to see the background. So up to you. There's also a possibility to save it as EXR, but uh, I think later, later down the line. Speaking of which, about, about later down the line, um, there's many things that I haven't shown you. <laughs> like so many things. Uh, so don't think that... Um, don't think for a second that this is like a limited software in terms of, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. You can do mostly anything with it as long as it's uh, towards realism. If you want stylized renders, then Rhino, V-Ray for Rhino starts breaking down and you're much better off using cycles for Blender or 
Arnold for 3DS Max or uh, what's another good one? Even Keyshot. Well, maybe not Keyshot. Anyway, but for realistic renders or semi-stylized uh, realistic renders, uh, V-Ray is a super, super strong tool uh, to know and to use. Uh, and I'll leave you with this. Okay. I'll show you the renders and the ending rollout. So, hope you enjoyed these tutorials and I'll see you in a Bye.